Jack, you have an amazing reputation. Some people have told me you're the best butcher in London. <laughs> Is that true? I'm the best Irish butcher in Oxford, certainly. So tell me your story, Jack. Well, I left Tipperary in 97 and I went and, uh, looking for a new challenge. Within the only thing I knew how to do, which was butchery. And so I went off to Brussels where I had worked. Okay. As a teenager, and set up uh, an Irish butcher shop there, and we imported nearly almost everything from Ireland. The shop really took off. We were we were into selling pallet loads of meat. Today, now we have we have our own Angus herd in conjunction with the Keatons in Cork. And we'll have something like 3,000 head of Angus that are all fed on a very very specific grain diet to kind of mimic the American the American grilling effect on beef. You know. The marbling, the intramuscular fat. That's what you're looking for, the marbling in the beef. The marbling is crucial. And I believe uh, when our beef hits that top bar, I've been all over the planet. Uh, they have steaks everywhere and every continent. And really, the magic of Irish grass for the first wow. two years, it just gives the beef the flavor. a depth of flavor that mm -hmm. you'll never get out of a grain lot in Omaha or in New South Wales. You just cannot get past that flavor building block that we have in Ireland. And then, for the last 150, Days, then we, we refine it by pumping in the high protein grain diet to, to push on the, the marbling that's really crucial for a proper grilling steak. You know, it's not necessary yeah. for oxtail or braising, yes, yeah. it would be a waste yeah. to feed cattle like that. But we can get such a premium into the loin because of the marbling that, uh, and then selling the burgers about to be launched now in Ireland, grain fed burgers, okay, which are a whole different flavour profile. You've got a great counter and I see you've got some very interesting cuts. Feather blade like, that's really interesting. Feather blade is really interesting and when that's taken apart it becomes a flat iron steak. Yeah. Um, the anglais. Steak, the anglais, yeah. the diaphragm steak. And you know I remember pulling those out of the, the bucket in the, in the slaughterhouse at home and yeah. they were going through the mincer. I didn't know about it myself. Yeah. And a lot of those cuts I learned uh, in Belgium, the French okay. techniques. You get a lot more out of the animal, and it makes my my supplier very very happy. We can sell everything. That's often. fantastic. And so those niche cuts is really what kind of became our trademark in London. And do your customers appreciate the different and interesting cuts. Oh yeah, they'll come in here. If you notice, we sell most things from there to there. Yeah, every and part. You know, every part. It's fantastic. And uh, so the, the the gourmet food shopper, yeah. they all become our shoppers because they can you can get stuff here. That, Every single day of the week, you know, it's not just yeah. a gimmick that we put in a few odd cuts. Okay. Week. We sell an awful lot of doors outside to the restaurant trade as well, and uh, cuts that they just can't get. And, and cuts that won't particularly work okay. off grass fed cattle alone because if they're out in the field or up in the hills of Cavan, they, uh, they're, <laughs> they'll they're be working extra, a bit. Yeah, yeah they'll be true. working a bit. Yeah. And the old weather probably doesn't help. But when they're in the shed and eating grain and they're, they're happy yeah. out there on dry bed. And you're very keen and passionate on the importance of the supply chain. I'm back now to having beef for my two shops, um, one here in London, the other one in Brussels, wow. that I have all from single source farm. And that's a very, very unique thing, especially for London. Of course, it's a great story too, uh, isn't it? It is. You know, for your the, customers. Yeah. yeah. But you know, the story has to be true as yeah. well. Yeah, I and, totally agree. You know, PR is one thing, we have a great press and you know, we have great celebrity chefs that come in here and that's all great, but of ultimately it's about the beef. That's it, that's and the you're, star. You're only as good as your last yeah. sale, yeah, you know, you can think you're as great a man as, <laughs> and as you're eating the papers, but you know, it's, if I didn't have the boys at home pumping, exactly. uh, buying cattle every week and sticking them into the shed for yeah, me, I would, would not have the business that I have today. Well, Jack, it's a great success story. It's lovely to meet you. I'm wishing you continued success. Thank you. Thank you very much, Devin.